Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Amar Kumar. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to deploy Spring Boot microservices in Docker Container. How to orchestrate Docker Container using Docker Compose for running multiple microservices under one network, primarily to enable service to service communications. I will demonstrate you how to set up microservices monitoring using Prometheus and data visualization using Grafana. We will also learn to configure various metrics supported by Prometheus inside Grafana dashboard. And last but not least, we will also integrate distributed tracing using Zipkin. Entire source codes used in this tutorial are shared on GitHub for your reference. Please check out the link. And one sincere request, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I request you to please subscribe to my channel and get latest updates on my videos. Let's get started. This tutorial is all about deploying microservices inside the Docker container. Let's quickly understand how to set up and configure Docker container in your environment. For this tutorial, I am using Docker desktop in my machine. You can download Docker desktop from docker.com website. As you can see here, you can click on get started. And uh, here Docker desktop link is here. So as you can see, there are three download links for Mac, for Windows and for Linux. So since I'm using Mac OS, I have downloaded DMG file and set it up in my machine. Because I already have it in my machine, I'm not going to download again. And I will directly take you to the Docker desktop configuration page. So uh, this is the first page you will find once you start your Docker desktop in your local machine. Since uh, this uh, there is no container running, so um, I have not started any container. And uh, second link is the image link. Uh, as you can see here, there are a lot of images which I have already built or I have pulled from Docker Hub. Uh, you can find uh, Open Zipkin, MySQL, and uh, this is the open jdk 14 since i'm using uh, jdk 14 uh, inside the docker this is what you need to get it and uh, grafana prometheus and there are a lot many uh, images are there so let's not get into that i will anyway i'm going to show you how to uh, build a docker image so for now i'm going to setting page in the setting page, you will find this general resources, Docker, engine, and another link. So uh, in general tab, as you can see, there's a start Docker desktop when you log in. So once you check this option, uh, whenever you log in your machine or start your machine, uh, Docker desktop will be uh, started at the time. So I have intentionally not done that. So going to resource. Here you can manage your resources. Currently in my machine by default, since it's a four core and eight GB RAM machine, uh, by default they have taken two, two CPU, two core you can say, and the memory is uh, allocated two GB by default. However, you can change this memory allocation uh, as and when you require. At the same time, you can also change the CPU uh, configuration. You can also have a swap configuration and the disk image uh, as you have seen here all these images are somewhere occupying your hard disk right so for that you can configure uh, it all depend upon the usage like how many images you want to build or run or maintain so as per that you can configure your disk image size in your local machine and this is what the location of that my disk for that particular image let's quickly go to uh, other uh, as uh, if you are aware uh, you can also run kubernetes uh, within that docker desktop uh, this is really a good feature if you are planning to use kubernetes definitely you would need to increase the resource because two cpu would not be enough to run Docker as well as the Kubernetes engine. So anyway, I'm not enabled Kubernetes for now. So this is what you can do in configuration in a nutshell. I'm not going to deep dive in all these features. The whole objective is to 
showcase you how to build the docker container and deploy in the machine so i'm going back so uh, if you want to run any images either you can directly click on run or you can run through the command prompt so not to worry i will be demonstrating you uh, how you can build docker image and can run inside the docker desktop for this tutorial we are going to use primarily two microservices one is inquiry service and other is stock service let me quickly brief you about these services both these services are built on spring boot framework and using spring cloud components inquiry service requires input parameters which are highlighted in red like product name availability and product unit these are the input parameters required to call stock service which we'll see later as you can see there are a couple of additional fields highlighted in blue these are product price discount offer which will come from stock service as an output total price is calculated based on the product multiplied by number of units inquiry service calls stock service through openfin client library which is injected in rest controller endpoint if you are not familiar with fin client not to worry let me quickly tell you you can consider openfin as an alternate of rest template later you can download the source code and uh, go through with that if you have any queries please let me know i am running inquiry service on port 8700 now let's have a quick look at a stock service stock service provides the information about products stock availability stock service input parameters are the product name and the product availability field whether it's available or not as highlighted in red color stock service returns product price and discount offer associated with the product highlighted in the blue for demo i have used h2 database to store entity values and using a spring boots jpi repository with h2 stock service is running on port 8800 for spring cloud components i am using netflix eureka naming server for service registry and discovery and using spring cloud api gateway service for routing api request to the destination now let's understand component architecture and integration flow used in this tutorial as you can see in this diagram user request for api access will be passed through registry server to fetch the network location of that service if you are new to service registry let me quickly explain you why we need service discovery generally in a conventional soa ecosystem services network location would hardly change right because they are deployed in local data centers but in cloud ecosystem you cannot restrict it by providing hard coded network address to any service right one of the reason is services instances are dynamically managed and orchestrated by container that's the reason as we can see in the second step the registry server will provide the network address of inquiry service to the user call which is running on port 8700 and this inquiry service calls stock service as a third step inquiry service is calling a stock service through fin client which is running on port 8800 you know that microservices are independent deployable unit and can be accessed by any service the same you can see at fourth stage user can directly access a stock service on port 8800 if you look at fifth step we can access the inquiry service by enabling routing through spring cloud api gateway server as well if you want to learn how to write routing please check out my video for microservices with spring boot and spring cloud with example the same you can find the link in the suggestion box as well now let's come to the monitoring section Prometheus is an open source system monitoring and alerting toolkit for your microservices health monitoring. It has set up metrics which can be enabled to find the system's health. In this example, we are going to monitor all these four services, which is Eureka Discovery Service, Inquiry Service, Stock Service, and API Gateway Service. Prometheus will collect metrics data from all these services through Spring Cloud Actuator and send it to Grafana for visualization. In this tutorial we will see how to integrate monitoring on your microservice. For now, let's move to other component which is Zipkin. We all know that Zipkin is a distributed tracing system that helps gather timely data needed to troubleshoot latency problems in a service architecture. We are going to integrate three services primarily which are inquiry service, stock service and API gateway service to Zipkin. If you want to know more about Zipkin 
you can check out the same video regarding microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. You can find the link in the suggestion box again. Now we will build the microservices and deploy in Docker container locally. We are going to deploy four services and they are Eureka Registry Service, API Gateway Service, Stock Service and Inquiry Service as depicted in this diagram. All these services are already uploaded to TechFX GitHub repository. We simply need to clone these repository in local machine and build. All right. So for that, let's start the command prompt and create a local folder. So let me create a folder over here. So currently this folder is empty. Uh, we will clone all those microservices from GitHub repository to this folder. So as you can see here, uh, this is my GitHub repository where I have list of all the repositories. So we'll start from Eureka naming server. So to clone this Eureka naming server, you can go to code and copy this url so i'm just copying this url going to command prompt and saying get clone and you have to copy this so it is cloned and downloaded so the download size was around uh, 1.93 mb right and showing is 100 percent completed so if I will see ls lt. Now you can see this is a folder. Now let's go inside the folder called TechFX Eureka naming server. Sorry. Oops. So all the source that you can see there's a pom.xml file, there's a src folder, and there's a docker file as well. I will explain you this little later. Since uh, this is Spring Boot microservices and I have used uh, Maven as a build tool, you can see here pom.xml file. Now let's go move out from this location. Go to the root location over here. And now we will clone another repository. And this is API Gateway. So here is my TechFX Spring Cloud API Gateway service. I'll go inside again and I will go to code and I will copy this link and we'll go to command prompt and we'll again apply the same command git clone and this time we will change the URL. So this time it is TechFX Spring Cloud API Gateway service dot git. So this also got downloaded, 1.21 MB it shows. Uh, now we will clone the third repository and this is stock service, All right? So for that, you can go back and this is what I have, take effects product stock service, okay? So I'll go inside take effects product stock service. I'll clone this again. Okay, so git clone URL. So this time I'm putting URL take effects product stock service and say enter. So now we will clone our last service which is inquiry service. Copy and go to command prompt. Again, apply the same command, git clone, put the URL, take FX product inquiry service and enter. So you will find there are four 
services cloned over here. So all these four services are now available in my local machine. We need to build these services. So we'll first build Eureka naming server. You have to go inside take effects Eureka naming server. Now I am inside this root folder of this Eureka naming server and uh, we will execute this pom.xml with the maven command. Before we do, let me quickly give you a walkthrough of this uh, Eureka naming server. So I am opening IntelliJ. So this is the Eureka naming server uh, project which I have already configured in my IntelliJ. Uh, let's review first pom.xml. As you can see here, this is a Java version 14 I have used and this is what actually I have put the dependency for this Eureka naming server. So the first dependency is Spring Cloud Starter Netflix Eureka server itself. The second dependency what you can see is the actuator. This I will explain later when we'll talk about the Prometheus monitoring at that time. So this is what actually we have as a, in a pom.xml, all these dependencies. As you can see here, Maven compiler plugin also, I have put it here. Okay, before we go into building the service, I'll also quickly give you a heads up about application.yaml file. As you can see, this is the name of the service, TechFX Eureka Naming Service. I have enabled distributed tracing here. It's running on port 8761. So this is the way you enable actuator. If you want to know more about actuator, you can refer my previous video, which is on microservices in Spring Boot with example. Let's go to Docker file. I'll just give you a quick heads up about this Docker file. The very first line, it talks about the JDK reference. As I've shown you in my Docker desktop images, this is what actually I'm, I have downloaded uh, OpenJDK 14. This reference I'm giving inside Docker file. Second line, we are giving instruction to copy a jar file from the target location. And this is what the jar we are referring to. This, this we are copying from uh, target to after jar. And third is Java environment uh, that uh, OPT is the heap setting. I'm not putting any values here and using default. Uh, this, the fourth line, Expose 8761, it, it talks about the, the port number on which this service is running. And the last is, we are going to highlight here the Java-jar command. This is what we are trying to highlight here. So this Docker will be applying java-jar command with that jar file name. You will need to create Docker file uh, and keep in the root folder of every microservices and you will have to give reference of this min bare minimum. These are the uh, settings you need to configure, you need to put in Docker file. My every microservice, I'm going to create file in their root folder. So this is what actually we are referring. This is uh, take effects Eureka naming server and on this root folder, this Docker file is available. So now we can go back to command prompt and we can build this service. So for building a microservice, uh, since we are using Maven, so here is a command mvn clean compile package and enter. It will take a little while.
okay so build is successful as you can see here test run one fail zero error zero skipped zero and finally we are getting build success message the second thing what we have to do is we need to apply the docker build command to build the docker image and push it to docker desktop for that you have to apply the command I am little lazy typing the whole command. So what I have done, I have copy pasted. This is what the tag we are saying, colon tag. So since I am not using any tag, so latest is the default tag. And then we are saying, once this finishes, it will build the Docker image in your Docker desktop. So let's apply this command. And remember, this is this is the exactly those those steps which we have referenced in our Docker file. Like you know, the copy the target file and then exposing to eight seven six one, putting the entry points, and yes successfully built it can as you can see here the successfully built and this is the docker image id so now go back to docker image so here in this image you will find one more docker image got added and this is tech effects eureka naming server and as you can see the tag is latest image id is exactly this uh, 30 some alphabet and then 947 if you go back to command prompt you will find exactly this link this is what the build id then you can see the created date and time like a la less than a minute ago and this is the docker image size 238 now let's build another image so go back to command prompt and uh, this time uh, we'll move out and this time we'll go to take fx uh, spring cloud api gateway service we'll go inside we'll apply the same command you can ambient clean compile package let's wait for this command gets finished so let's apply the docker build command let's change this name let's copy this so we are applying the docker build pull create and uh, you will be wondering this this docker file this double quote the, the value is it should be the exactly same what we have named as a docker file so if you remember here uh, this is what the docker file we are referring to this is the docker file so that that name should be exactly is a capital docker file and this is what actually i'm putting a reference so if if you are using something different if you are using something different name you will have to use that same name over here now let's apply this command you can follow these steps go back to docker desktop and here you can see now this image is built so what we are doing we are we are building docker images one by one 
so uh, let's first uh, build all these four images from the from the microservices and then i will show you how we can run using a docker compose or even you can run independently if you want to run independently uh, as you know that docker by default uh, that because since it's a containerized environment it doesn't allow you to communicate with each other uh, one docker container do not know about other docker container if uh, you want uh, if you have written one service to communicate to other service you will need docker compose now let's build our third service which is stock service so for that let's go inside the stock service apply maven clean compile and package and enter it got built now let's apply a docker image command Go to Docker and you can see this product stock service is built now. So now let's build our for service which is inquiry service. Okay, oops. I had a spelling mistake in package so that I rectified so inquiry service is also built successfully locally so now let's apply the command for docker build let's change this product inquiry service okay there's no spelling mistake yes and enter So go back to Docker desktop and we have our all four microservices images available in our local repository. By the way, uh, I just forgot to mention you about the remote repository. This remote repository is the Docker Hub repository. For that, you will have to log into Docker Hub through Docker desktop. So as you can see here, this is the my personal uh, docker hub id and this is what it shows here so i have already logged into docker hub and uh, these are the two uh, repositories i have pushed on docker hub when we say docker hub it's a docker cloud right so this is all our images are i have not yet pushed to docker hub is all available inside docker desktop which is running in my local machine so next step is let's create a docker compose yaml file i have already uploaded a yaml file 
to TechFX repository. And this is what that uh, repository name is. So let's clone this repository now in my in our local machine. Go to command, move out from this place, go to main folder. Oops. Okay. So git clone and give this a reference. That's it. So as you can see here, uh, takefx docker compose workspace is created. Let's get inside the workspace and see what is there inside. So you will find there is a docker compose yaml file and there is one folder called config. Let's examine this yaml file and the what is there inside the config file. So I'm going to IntelliJ. I've opened this project inside the IntelliJ. So as you can see here, uh, this contains a docker compose dot yaml file and uh, the inside the config there is a prometheus dot yaml file. This I'll talk about later. Now let's examine what is there in docker compose dot yaml file. So as you can see here, this docker compose yaml file starts with the version id this is mandatory compulsory you will have to put any version number and then there is one command called volumes this we require for prometheus data uh, now let's understand this service tag within the service tag if we can see uh, there is a couple of uh, microservices injected and this is exactly the TakeFX Eureka naming server is the name you can provide. You can provide any name and this is the image reference. This image reference is nothing but your Docker image reference. So inside the Docker Compose uh, exactly the, the same name is available. Uh, this is what actually it's referring to. Next line is port number. If you remember, we have run Eureka naming server on port 8761 to expose to 8761 for this is what the Eureka naming server uh, Docker file. So this, this is exactly the port number which we are referring to. And then there is one tag called networks. As I had mentioned you earlier, through Docker Compose, uh, you can create a virtual network through that network, your multiple microservices can communicate with each other. So this is what the virtual network we have created here the network name is test network this actually if you look at the bottom this is what the tag we have we are referring to this is networks tag and the name is test network so created network here in the name of test network and this we are referring in each and every microservices then we are talking about the second microservices and this is take fx product stock service the, again the image reference is taken from the docker desktop image reference and since uh, this uh, requires couple of environment variable setting so that is the reason uh, through this environment tag you can set up the environment variable uh, if you want to understand uh, what these variables are I'll, I'll quickly update you. This is a Java OPTS inside the Docker. So where we are saying uh, my variable name called Eureka server, this is the environment variable and this is the value. Likewise, uh, if there are any environment variable referenced called Zipkin server, then the address will be like this. Uh, this is how Docker understand the url if you we'll put localhost colon 8761 docker will not be able to identify or access localhost from docker container we are using these names here so this takefx eureka name server is nothing but is this takefx eureka naming server so whatever service name you have you are going to put there for each microservices the same will be referenced for that particular microservice if you want to access. Likewise, uh, as you can see zipkin server, the value is http column zipkin column 9411. So if you go down, you will find there is a zipkin 
uh, service we have created and the, the name is Zepkent. So this we are referring and if you look at the port 9411, this is the port exactly we are referring here. Now let's come to next tag and this is depends on tag. So basically depends on tag uh, allows you to put dependency. Say like uh, you want to run this uh, TechFS product inquiry service with some predecessor. So this TechFS product stock service uh, is the predecessor for uh, inquiry service. This is what we are talking about. What we are saying that before you run TechFX product inquiry service, make sure that TechFX product stock service runs. So, so far we talked about Eureka naming service, the stock service and inquiry service. Now let's talk about our fourth microservice which is TechFX Spring Cloud API Gateway Service. So again, the, all the tags will be the same. The only image reference will be changed uh, since uh, it also has the environment variable dependency of Eureka server and Zipkin. So this is what actually we put. So here for Cloud API Gateway Service, we are saying the uh, it will run on port 8900 and exposed to 8900 on the same. And you can see here depends upon. So this API Gateway Server has got three services dependency. So it, it says like a dependency on Eureka naming service, inquiry service and a stock service. Now, let me quickly explain you like uh, we are also running Prometheus and Grafana as a monitoring solution and we are running as a Docker image only. That is the reason we have put here uh, Prometheus and Grafana's reference. I'll explain you when we'll talk about monitoring solution. So this is what our docker compose.yaml file. Okay, uh, you can keep this docker compose.yaml file anywhere. Currently I have kept docker compose yaml file in this location. Uh, take effects services and docker compose location. Uh, if you want to run this docker compose, you simply need to put docker compose up. Once you enter this command, it will run all our services, whatever we have referenced inside docker compose. So far we have learned how to configure multiple microservices inside docker compose, right? And we have configured our four microservices. Uh, Eureka naming service, stock service, inquiry service, and API gateway service. Now, let's understand how we can configure monitoring with microservices using Prometheus and Grafana. Before we come to this uh, services detail, let me just give you a brief about how we can download the images of Prometheus and Grafana and one more uh, component called distributed tracing with Zipkin, right? So let's visit to hub.docker.com. So if you open the link of hub.docker.com and search for Prometheus, uh, you will be getting a multiple list of uh, different sources of Prometheus. Uh, I would recommend you to please search for prom slash Prometheus. This is what actually I'm using in my machine also. And this looks like an, this is an official uh, image. Uh, once you search for prom slash Prometheus, you will find a docker pull command. All right. So you can copy this docker pull command and run on your, on your local machine command prompt. All right. So once you do that, uh, it, it will pull the image of Prometheus from docker hub to your docker desktop and uh, it will be listed out here like this. Similarly, you can, uh, also search for Grafana slash Grafana uh, inside your hub.docker.com and uh, you will be ending up with this, this page and there you can copy the link of docker pull and uh, apply this command on your local machine and the image will be copied from hub to your docker desktop and same applies for Zipkin. So this is the open Zipkin slash Zipkin what actually I am using. Uh, however, you can use any version or any sources of these components. It will be like a more or less it will be similar. But since I have not used other version, I would recommend to try this. Now we have all our microservices image built. 
these are the four microservices then we have zipkin then we have grafana and prometheus now let's understand how we can integrate these three components inside docker compose for that just open docker compose so as you can see here uh, this is how you can inject a service of prometheus so you can give any name so here i'm giving the name of prometheus as a prometheus only then the image reference this will be by default taken uh, that from the docker desktop one more thing it requires an additional tag called volumes the reason is you will have to give reference of your config file uh, where this config file is located when we use volumes tag uh, we provide the reference of your config file there are however a couple of additional uh, references as well but those are not that mandatory but giving a config file is a mandatory i mean you will have to put this similar to that uh, you will also need to have a command uh, reference and inside the command as you can see there are multiple uh, key values you have to provide at least config.file keys and value reference inside the command others are even if you can comment out uh, there won't be any kind of issues but you will have to provide a config file if you don't provide config file reference by default this is the value it will be taken anyway i have not made any changes so even if i you no know, comment out this uh, it will work because it's a default value all right so now let's come to uh, next tag the support uh, as you guys are aware that uh, by default prometheus port is 9090 and here we are saying also expose it the same port exposed to docker container as well again the depends on is not uh, compulsory uh, here just uh, like i have put as a reference purpose you can even remove that one very important thing is network right coming to a uh, next uh, component which is grafana compared to prometheus grafana is very much straightforward uh, you just need to put a uh, image reference and the port number and again the dependency here i have intentionally put the dependency of prometheus because i want this grafana to be loaded after prometheus gets loaded right and the network again the setup and last but not least this is the zipkin right and this is what this reference we are providing zipkin requires an additional environment variable reference as you can see here uh, that environment variable name is storage type and value is mem mem refers to in memory uh, there are multiple data types available in zipkin elastic could be one of the data types then even database like a mysql or or postgre or any other database can be uh, one of the storage type and uh, and even you can use a uh, queuing uh, you know uh, service as a storage type so like rabbit mq or something like okay uh, so these are the various storage type you will have to put and uh, rest of the tags are almost very common tags like a ports as you know that zipkin runs on by default it runs on 9.4.1 and uh, this is what the dependency and network again this network test network refers to finally the master tag called networks so this values and these values should match so this is what is all about docker compose and uh, one more yaml file let me explain you i just missed that uh, when, whenever we are configuring prometheus uh, remember like we were talking about the config file so config file is a must a reference of config file so where this config file resides in my machine the, this config file so this this volume is basically a, a logical volume where we are saying dot config and the the volume detail is etc prometheus so what it will do when you execute this docker compose it will create a logical volume in your machine where this yaml file is kept so in this case this yaml file is at the location of 
if you come go to the command prompt so in this location it is there so on the take effects services slash take this docker compose workspace so wherever this yammer file is there so docker compose yammer file will be there it will create a config volume so this config volume will contain prometheus.yaml file this is what that is mandatory so uh, so when we are putting the volume of config and this this file reference uh, it will pick the prometheus.yaml file from that location so let's quickly understand uh, what all the different uh, you know uh, configuration we we require to do in terms of prometheus monitoring so very first thing is a global setting parameter this global setting parameter says it has two variable call is craft interval and call evolution interval the meaning of this is every 5 second the result should be populated in terms of performance matrix every 5 seconds right so now coming to the next uh, config element this config element has got a job element if you can see so so suppose if you want to monitor any services you will have to create a job on for that service this job name is nothing but a unique identity of basically a unique name because i'm going to monitor stock service so i'm giving the job name as a stock service and this scrap interval 5 seconds so this if you are reapplying over here if you are reusing this inside this uh, job name uh it will overwrite the default the global setting of that is scrap interval so if you are putting a scrap interval 15 seconds and here 5 second this 5 second will be overwritten by 15 seconds okay so this will be applicable uh, now the matrix path actuator prometheus this is required so as i had mentioned uh, prometheus Uh, gets the health data uh, from Spring Boot actuator. How that I had shown you. Let me revisit to that page. So, so as I had shown you earlier, um, you will have to enable actuator inside your POM as a dependency. So this is how. we have done so here we have provided the dependency of actuator and then inside the application.yaml file this is how we are injecting we are saying okay enable the health monitoring actuator health monitoring through this through this setting so we are saying management.endpoints.wave.exposure.include equal to star and we are saying health show detail enable always so you will have to put this inside your yaml file this so this is how you are enabling actuator let's go back to our docker compose workspace so this is exactly the the url this is this is default by default endpoint so i will show you this later by executing this uh because that we have not yet started running the service uh this will not appear right so uh once we start the service i will show you how uh how this endpoint look like okay the second configuration element is a target element this is how like uh, what we are saying that uh because we are we want to monitor stock service for docker this is the address if if you will use local host docker will not be able to access local host however you can through your browser you will be able to access local host but docker when we run any docker image inside the container uh, it will not be able to communicate with your local machine basically when you run any service inside the docker container you will have to give the url with the name 
of that service. So this is the service what we have configured inside the Docker Compose, right? So if you go to a stock service name, so this exactly, you need to copy this and put inside this prometheus.yaml file. And you have to give the port number on which you are running particularly that service. So whatever service you want to monitor, you will have to put as a job inside the prometheus.yaml file. So here, for example, we are, uh, we are going to monitor stock service. Next is inquiry service, naming service, and even API gateway service. So we are going to monitor all these four services and the target will be defined with the service name and the port which we have exposed to. Okay, so this is how we can configure Prometheus. And now let's go back to Docker Compose. And just from top to bottom, let's uh, understand like whatever we have configured. So we are saying we have configured a we have configured services element. Inside the services, we have naming service, we have product stock service, we have inquiry service, API gateway, Prometheus we have configured, Grafana we have configured and Zipcan. Now, if we run this Docker Compose, what we will do? It will execute all these Docker images as per what we have defined in this Docker Compose config file. All right. Okay. Now let's execute this Docker Compose file. So now we are on command prompt and now let's execute Docker Compose. So this is the place. So let's come out from that config and let's go to a directory where Docker Compose.yaml file is there. So to run Docker Compose, you have to apply the command Docker Compose and simply up. Let's apply this command. So as you can see, uh, whatever images as a service we had listed, it's now executing 101. It will definitely take little time because we are almost running seven services. I mean, four microservices and three components. So we'll take little time. services are getting loaded here. All right. So if you click on any service, you will exactly be able to see the log and see like the status. So I'm inside the Eureka service and see service Eureka started Eureka service. I'm going back. I'm checking this Zipkin is also showing the Zipkin is up. Okay. I hope all the services are up and running. Cool. So let's go to command prompt and see. I think yes, all services are running. Uh, finally, Eureka naming service is running. So now let's go to browser and check a couple of things. So as I told you, uh, the Prometheus by default runs on 9090. All right. So going inside the status configuration, you will find this is exactly the same configuration what we had shown you in IntelliJ. All right. So this is what exactly so it's referring to. So we have kept uh, this Prometheus.yaml file here and kept in config and it is referring exactly the same config file. So as you can see job name, stock service, sorry, stock service, inquiry service, naming service, and the finally API gateway service and their addresses with the port details. Now, you can 
Prometheus comes with presets of you know uh, performance metrics. There, there are there are many presets. Like if you can just space press space bar, you can find there are there are so many uh, performance metrics presets are available. Say like system CPU usage. I'm just trying to select one, and I'm saying execute. So now you can see the values, right? Uh, it, it shows four lines. The meaning of this four line is uh, each line for each services which we have enabled inside the Prometheus, right? So here is for naming services saying, so system is up by 0 0.08 seconds and inquiry service again, same and all this data. If you can go and again press the this thing and say like, okay, um, I want to see a system CPU count or say like I want to see see process CPU usage. So this is what the data is. Now we will render the same data in Grafana because as you can see here these data are you know so much very much uh, vanilla kind of. However it, it provides a graph so if you click on this graph, you will be able to get the graph, but still like uh, these graphs are very much, you know, kind of a very vanilla kind of. So if you integrate your Grafana with Prometheus, you will be able to get a better visualization. How? I'll show you right away. So if you remember, we have configured Prometheus on localhost 3000. So this both Prometheus and Grafana both are running as a container service. Okay. It's not really running in your machine. It runs on the container configured on your machine, right? But still I'm able to access this as a localhost. See, you can access container URL through localhost, but container will not be access, container will not be able to access your system. Right? This is what actually I'm trying to highlight you. Unless you configure that as a volume or as an environment variable. So, you know the default login is admin admin. Uh, for Grafana. So I'm logging here. I'm just skipping. I'm not resetting the password now. I'm just skipping this. Now very first thing what you have to do is you have to go to setting. You have to add the data source. So clicking on the data source. There are there are various data sources are available, right? There are there are many many data sources that Grafana supports. So since we have, we want to add Prometheus as a data source, so this is how we will say select. As you can see here, if you are going to put localhost HTTP, I'll just try to show you localhost colon 9090 and say save and test. It will fail. It will save, it will say the data source added, but then it's not able to ping to that data source. It's saying HTTP error bad gateway. So this is what actually I want to highlight you. To access Prometheus actual data source, which is running as a, another container, similar to Grafana, you will have to give the name of that service. So inside the Docker Compose, we had given Prometheus name as a Prometheus. And then if you go and say save and test, it's working now, right? So going back, so we have configured Prometheus as a, your data source. Second thing what you have to do is you have to go to either create the dashboard or import the dashboard or provide any reference of the existing dashboard, right? So I'll just show you a couple of these things so, so you will understand how to create a dashboard. So I'm just clicking on plus and here when you go to create dashboard, uh, you will have to add panels. So panel means the metrics basically what you have to define. So you have to go to here, this place, here you need to select uh, Prometheus. 
and then you have to select matrix as if you can see my mouse movement so this is these are the different matrix category these matrix were also visible inside the prometheus right if you remember so when we were doing right uh, like this so all these matrix list the same is appearing over here also so i'm just just to show you as a no demo or no, i'm just selecting this up value so the time i selected up and i'm saying okay system up matrix okay and you have to apply save now here by default is a six hours right if you select five minutes so you will get the system up detail all right you can also configure some different uh, metrics say like okay this time okay i'm taking a process system cpu usage right the time you are taking system cpu usage you can say like cpu usage and apply so last five minutes system usage are there so you can click and get each services health status of usage that cpu usage all right so now i'll see i'm not going to cover everything i just my intention was to just show you like how you can configure uh, grafana with uh, different uh, prometheus metrics and uh, you can try 101 all these metrics and uh, i will also tell you how you can uh, even design your dashboard so everything is like you know movable so you can design this way you can even resize the panels even you can resize this panel right and you can keep on adding as you can keep on adding as per your requirement so this is the way you can create your dashboard okay all right so i will show you i have created one one sample dashboard so what i will do now I will, now i will show you how you can import existing dashboard right so say like okay i'm going to dashboard i'm saving this dashboard like my sample my i mean sample one i'm saving right i'm going to dashboard this whatever that value is you're saving this dashboard appears in your dashboard section you can have multiple dashboard all right so i would i just wanted to show you how you can import a dashboard so just go to plus sign and check this import you will be coming to this page where you have two option either copy paste your json directly over here or you select a json file to get uploaded so i'm just trying to show you like okay i'm i'm going with upload feature so actually i have copied this sample dashboard here my custom dashboard grafana 3x3 something like so once i import it and i say okay import this is how this is what the sample dashboard i had created once just for demo purpose all right so there i have created a various different metrics one is a system up matrix and the system load average cpu usage uh cpu uh, one is the system cpu usage other is the process cpu usage process up time process start time per second jvm even jvm uh, like a performance you can monitor uh, even that http service request and response you can count and monitor so i would request you to go and explore all these metrics what is provided by uh, you know prometheus so this is what all about uh, monitoring with prometheus and grafana now let me quickly show you how you can integrate zipkin with your microservices for distributed tracing so as remember we had made 
Zipkin running on port 9411. All right. So now let me go back to uh, Postman and let's run a service called stock service directly. So here I'm trying to access the stock service, which is running on port 8800 directly. So I'm just clicking on this. Here you go, right? So you are able to fetch the data. So this data is coming from where? It's coming from the Dockerized container, which is running inside your Docker desktop. This time I will try to access stock service through inquiry service. My inquiry service runs on port 8700, all right? So if I hit this link, what it will do? It will first go to inquiry service and inquiry service internally calls stock service, okay? The third way of doing, if you remember the integration flow, the third approach was like even you can access inquiry service through your API gateway. So your API is running, your API gateway is running on 8900 and uh, this is the uh, URL, this is the endpoint which we have mapped inside API gateway as a route, all right? And now trying to access this, okay? So we have hit three times the URL, one was directly through 8800, second was through inquiry service and third, we are hitting the inquiry service through your API gateway configuration, right? So now let's go to browser and see how Zipkin can help you to give you the trace of each service calls. So remember, these are the three traces, right? Each traces has its own span inside. Okay, each, each trace has its own span defined. So this each trace has the default trace ID. So as we had hit first stock service directly, so this is the first one call it shows. In this, in this case, we have hit through inquiry service. So the trace starts from inquiry service and then goes to stock service. Likewise, uh, in this third call uh, where we had hit uh, stock service through API gateway. So API gateway was calling inquiry service, inquiry service was calling stock service, all right? So if you go and just check this detail, so uh, just click on the show button and it will be able to give you the complete trace and span detail. If you want to learn more about Zipkin, I have already created a detailed video how to integrate Zipkin and how Zipkin can help you to debug the microservices issues. So please check out my uh, that other video. Uh, I will uh, post the link in the description box and the same you can also get it through the suggestion box. So let me uh, summarize. We had defined two services. Both were registered with Eureka naming service. We had deployed all those four microservices inside the Docker container. And we also executed three components that Zipkin, Grafana and Prometheus as a Docker container. And we are able to get end-to-end -end service monitoring. That's all from this tutorial. Hope you guys find this tutorial informative and useful. Please let me know in comment box if you guys have any suggestions or need to get any clarifications. A quick update about my upcoming videos. Very soon I'm going to upload a tutorial on how we can deploy Spring Boot microservices on Kubernetes platform and how Kubernetes orchestrates microservices. In my another video, I'm going to demonstrate you how you can integrate ELK stack with microservices for log management. Last but not least, I sincerely request to you all, if you guys have not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel and get latest video updates. Thanks for watching. See you until next time.